All right, um, I am going to go over trimming your quilt. Normally, I baste my quilt and then trim it, and I will do that with the other one that I made. But um, if you prefer to trim first, or if you are sending your quilt to a long armor, you do need to trim it first. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, so what I like to use um, is a large square ruler. This is 12 and a half inches. You can use bigger or smaller, or you can just use one long ruler. I like to use both, but you could do the whole thing with, with just this one. So I'm going to set this one aside for the moment. Oh, and a rotary cutter. So the tricky thing about um, trimming this quilt is obviously that, you know, the edges aren't straight to begin with. So, so it's a little tricky. So uh, I have a couple of recommendations if you're nervous. Um, one that I saw somebody did on Instagram was that they used um, some washi tape to mark where they were going to cut beforehand. And what I have done before too um, is used a washable marker to draw the lines of where I wanted to cut before I made any cuts. Um, but you, if you feel confident, um, just go for it. That's what I'm gonna do right now. So what I'm gonna do, I actually like to turn it this way. I'm going to start in this corner. This is actually like the bottom left corner in the picture of my quilt. It doesn't matter which corner you start off. I'm just orienting you to where I'm at. Um, so I first clean off your cutting table, which took me like 45 minutes. So it's worth it. It's annoying. Just do it. Um, I'm going to take my square ruler and I'm going to trim the corners first. Uh, there are a couple things that uh, you can do here to help you. One is uh, most rulers have a diagonal line on them that's a 45 degree angle. Um, this can kind of help you make sure that you're cutting straight because, well, even if you don't use the diagonal line, if you don't have a diagonal line, you can look um, and make sure that your seams are crossing through the same point uh, in the diagonal along the ruler. So that would mean like, if this one is crossing at three and a quarter inches, then it should cross um, at the um, quarter inch mark as it moves down the ruler, if that makes sense. So that will kind of help you make sure that that you're lining things up because you, you, you'll you line them up with the edges here, um, the, the outside of the seam allowance here and here, but those are the only points that you have to match at this point because these seams are uh, further out. So if you aren't confident, you can cut it a little bit big and then go back and trim later. So I am just going to line up with these two points right here. And then I'm going to spend a minute or two making sure that this is lined up. Um, so what I, yeah, so what I ended up with was, um, yeah, just making sure it's, it's pretty straight here. And if you end up overcutting just a little bit, you'll just have a, a quilt that's like an inch or two too smaller. It's not that big of a deal. Now I'm going to cut these two sides and I'm going to move on to the next corner. thing. I'm going to make sure that my 40, my 45 degree diagonal line is going through the center of the block over here. Um, another thing that you could do, uh, let me grab another ruler. If you want more points of reference, like I'm just getting a smaller ruler right here and I'm going to line it up with the edge and then I can align it with this other, I can't really see this other point here to make sure that my lines are going to be straight. So that, that works pretty nicely too. You can do it both directions to check and make sure everything's nice and straight. This looks, I'm just checking my diagonal line here. Line it just a little bit. 
this is it's this is a take your time thing measure five times cut once <laughs> uh all right that looks good i better do a good job because i'm gonna really embarrass myself if i cut wrong on this video because <laughs> i only have one quilt to show you i can't redo it uh I will show you um, after the other one's quilted. I, I like to, one of the reasons I like to trim this after it's quilted um, is because the quilting, batting, and backing kind of stabilizes the top a little bit. Uh, so this corner is going to be a little bit different because the points that are closest to the corners are going to be, especially with this one, is higher than this point. So I need to make sure that. I'm using this point to cut, so I'm going to add this ruler onto the edge. This would be easier with a 20 inch square, square ruler, but I don't have one, so I don't, I can't use that. Um, lining this up with the edge. Oh, my ruler slipped. Be careful. And all this extra, throw it in your scrap bin, use it for something someday. Um, you can cut a pretty solid scrap out of these leftovers. And do the other corner. And um, if you decide that you want to mark the lines before you trim, you just do the same thing, only instead of cutting, um, use tape or um, a washable marker or it doesn't even really have to be a washable marker because this part's going to be covered in binding so you won't see it later. So I'm going to use this extra ruler again. I just line it up with the edge and then line it up with the point. Um, that looks very wonky. All right, let me fix this. Uh, trimming a quilt top is actually probably my second least favorite part of making a quilt. Um, probably my least favorite thing is sewing the very last seam on the quilt top. I just, um, it makes me nervous that I'm gonna, you know, I don't know, it's heavy, it's hot, it's not my favorite thing. All right, my diagonal is looking pretty good. If you can trim this quilt top, you can trim any quilt top. <laughs> so if uh, you are a newer quilter and you're thinking, wow, I hate quilting. I hate trimming quilt tops. I never want to do that again. Most of them are not that bad. And this is the hardest part about this quilt, in my opinion. Otherwise, I probably would have labeled this pattern experienced beginner. I think I labeled it intermediate uh, for this reason. So I've now done all four corners and this video is getting really long. So if you're still sticking with me, I'm now going to do the sides. Um, so this part's a little easier than the corners. You should, if your ruler is long enough, you should be able to line up the part you just cut with the next low point, oh, I can't see, in the, oh dear, losing my stuff, okay, in the pattern, so, uh, or in the quilt top. So I have this line that I cut earlier, and I have this low point, and I've lined up my ruler. If you remember from that, what do you need to make a line? You need two points. <laughs> so that works pretty well in trimming your quilt top. And I've just exposed myself as a major math nerd. Um, all right. Also, I'm wearing my quilt nerd shirt. You can't really see. Uh, so I'm doing the same thing here. But here I have this edge that I trimmed. I have a point. And I have this edge that I trimmed. I'm just pulling. My quilt um, is kind of falling off the table a little bit. So I'm just making sure it's all straight. I have a fairly large table here. But, of course, if it were even bigger, that would be even better. <laughs> Recently we did my sewing room and got this giant um, IKEA countertop uh, table. This is much bigger than the table I used to have. But just, you know, 
I feel like if you're a quilter, you expand to fill whatever space you have. And so I quickly wish that it was even larger. All right, just doing the same thing. Um, I haven't shared this quilt top yet when I'm making this video. I haven't. When you watch it, I will have shared it, but I had a lot of fun putting together this patriotic version this weekend, and this is the first time that I have used a non-white fabric o fabric, and so I used navy, partially because that was the only fabric I had enough of in my stash, and buying solids is a little tricky right now. All right. So now done half of the sides. Um, it's definitely worth it to take your time on this one. My video is now 11 minutes long, so it's the longest quilting video I've ever made. I'm not great at filling silence, so I'm kind of jabbering on. This was a fun combination of fabrics to put together um, because I almost never sew with red. So unless I'm making a patriotic kind of quilt, which I did here again, but I'm just not really a red person, but I have some fun red fabrics, especially this um, red kind of Scandinavian print, which was kind of the inspiration for this colors in this quilt top. I think I got it at Joann's in the quilters print section probably a few years ago. It's interesting because we've moved a few times in the last decade um, and so I kind of can, can date when I bought something by remembering where I bought it. So I know I bought this fabric when we lived in San Diego so it had to be between 2013 and 2016 so somewhere in there. I remember buying it, but the concept of time is not great, so. <laughs> okay, so I'm still doing the same thing. Mark, I've got this straight line, I've got a seam, I've got another seam. Almost long enough to reach that seam. Now I can, so, or this point. Um, I want to always make sure that my fabric isn't or is straight across um, because if the because my edge of the edge of my quilt is hanging off the table if it's getting pulled down then it's not going to be a straight line so I always readjust it a few times I'll just stand on my very last cut um so after this if you are sending your quilt to a long armor especially but even if you're going to quilt it yourself I would suggest that you stay, oh, I did not cut that straight, so pretend you didn't see that, um, that you stay stitch, stay stitch around the edge of your quilt. So what that will mean, um, and I will do it and post a picture, is that you go around the edges of the quilt with a, you know, like a basting stitch. You can, you know, make the stitch length like four or five or whatever, um, and just sew around the whole quilt. And that will just keep these seams on the edges from coming apart and it will help keep the the quilt from stretching when you send it to the long armor and they will be grateful that you did it because it will help. Um, also, especially if you have a lighter color fabric and some darker fabrics, take the time to go through and trim these threads on the back um, so that you can't see them through your quilt, especially if a quilt gets wet, they become very noticeable. But anyway, you stuck through with it with me through that whole video. I've now trimmed this quilt top and I hopefully I'm going to get to baste it next week. Um, okay, so right now I'm sewing a stay stitch around the edge of my quilt top. Um, what I like to use, um, and you can use any foot, but this is a stitch in the ditch foot. Um, and I like to use it for this kind of thing because I just move the needle over a little bit and then I can kind of customize how far away. I, I use this as a guide to sew and then I can decide how far away from that guide I want to sew. So it's about an eighth of an inch or even smaller. Um, it's just so along the very edge and I have turned my stitch length, let's see if you can see that, my stitch length is at four and a half. 
Um, and then I just wanna make, that will just keep things from stretching and it will make sure none of these seams get pulled apart.